The phylum Anolida are the segmented worms, containing over 22,000 species. The traditional morphological taxonomy of the Anolida has been completely overhauled based on genetic evidence in the 21st century. The main diversity of the Anolida is divided into the Sedentaria and Errantia. The Sedentaria include sessile tube-building species like the featherworms, but also free-moving species like earthworms and leeches. The Errantia include free-moving and predatory worms, such as bristleworms and bobbit worms. Our dissection object is the common earthworm, Lumbricus terrestris, also called the nightcrawler in the northeastern United States. Earthworms form the family Lumbricidae within subclass Clitilata within the phylum of the Annelida. The common earthworm is native to Europe. As an introduced species, it is now also found in Canada and the northern United States, and locally in several other continents. Through its consumption of leaves, it changes the food chain, and through its interactions with seeds, it changes the native flora. The common earthworm is elongated, cylindrical, with a pointed front and a flattened, blunt rear end. Under the slightly iridescent cuticle, it is reddish to brownish in color, with the front half of the back being distinctly darker to brown-purple, and getting lighter towards the rear. The dorsal blood vessel can shine through in the middle of the back. From February to August, a lighter-colored thickened belt, the clitellum, can be seen in the front third of the body of sexually mature animals. The earthworm belongs to the order Oligochaeta, within clitellata, the bristle worms. Before the preparation, these bristles can be carefully felt on the ventral side, the abdominal side. In each segment, there are four pairs of bristles, the setae two on the ventral side, and one pair of bristles laterally on each side. Earthworms are simultaneous hermaphrodites. The openings of two pairs of seminal receptacles lie between the ninth and tenth, and between the tenth and eleventh segment. The small, inconspicuous female genital openings, or female pores, are on the fourteenth segment, the pair of larger male pores on the fifteenth segment. In sexually mature animals, the male pores are surrounded by lip-shaped bulges. From there, a funnel extends, which is used for sperm cell transport. This sperm funnel extends to the clitellum. The clitellum extends over the segments 32 to 37, and is shadow-shaped, with bulges on both sides of the abdomen, the puberty ridges. At the end of the body, the pygidium, lies the vertical anal cleft. Only the part above the clitellum, that is, the front end of the worm, is prepared. The worm is now placed either on its ventral side in the dissection dish or held in hand. The first cut is made with fine scissors horizontally through the body wall above the clitellum. Gently squeezing exerts pressure on the worm, which makes cutting easier. The scissors are then inserted vertically into this incision in order to cut the worm up to the mouth opening. Make sure that the scissors are angled slightly outwards in order to avoid injuries to organs in the preparation object. The body wall remains almost intact even after incision, and the earthworm retains its shape without the organs lying bare or falling out. The worm is now aligned in the dissection dish and pinned with needles. One needle is inserted at the front end, and another is fixed below the clitellum, while carefully pulling the worm downwards. The worm should be very slightly stretched and tensioned. Now the worm is stretched piece by piece with two needles each. To do this, take a needle in each hand and insert it under the muscle tube, that is the body wall, and fold it outwards to pin it in place. Gradually, the entrails of the worm are exposed.
After the preparation, the preparation object should always be completely covered with water to avoid desiccation. In our case, in order to avoid reflections, this was not done. The preparation can now be drawn. It is important to ensure that the segments are numbered correctly. Some of the organs are only in certain segments. It is essential to recognize the suprafalangeal ganglion, or brain, the throat, or the pharynx, the nephridia, the lateral hearts, the esophagus, the four seminal receptacles, the six seminal vesicles, the crop, the gizzard, the midgut, the decepiments, the longitudinal and the circular muscles. The mouth opening is directed downwards and leads into the oral cavity, which merges in the end into the muscular pharynx. The paired subpharyngeal ganglion, which is striking because of its white color, lies dorsally on the front of the pharynx. The pharynx is joined by the slimmer esophagus, which extends approximately from the 7th to the 13th segment. The esophagus is followed by the rounded crop and immediately after that by the gizzard, which is equipped with very strong muscles and a strong cuticle, in which the food consisting of old leaves and other plant parts is ground up with the help of grains of sand that are taken up together with the food. The midgut, the initial part of which is wider than the stomach, runs in a straight line, gradually narrowing in the rear. The strong dorsal blood vessel lies dorsal to the intestine, it can be traced into the pharynx. It is contractile and drives the blood forward. In the 7th to the 11th segment, vascular loops, the parietal vessels, emanate from the dorsal vessels on each side. They open the esophagus into the abdominal vessel that runs ventrally from the intestine. Contractions of these aortic arches, also known as hearts, drive the blood from the dorsal vessel into the abdomen. The decepiments are delicate, fenestrated walls that only imperfectly separate the body segments. They attach to the intestine and the body wall and are only missing in the foremost segments. In every segment, there are tubular structures lying in cross loops to the right and left of the intestine, the nephridia, which serve as excretory organs for earthworms. They are only missing in the first three and in the last segments. The three pairs of large yellowish-white seminal vesicles of the genital apparatus are immediately noticeable when the body wall is opened. These are sac-shaped protuberances of the sepiments in segments 9 to 13. When they are strongly developed, they envelop the esophagus dorsally. The sexual apparatus also includes two pairs of seminal receptacles, invaginations of the integument that are closed towards the body cavity and are conspicuous as white, spherical structures that lie laterally in the ninth and 10th segments. You can easily find them and count the segments from there. That is, you can use them for orientation. If the specimen is covered with water, fine structures such as the nephridia or the suprafalangeal ganglion, the brain, can be seen clearly under the microscope. Here we choose a cross section just below the clitellum, in which all important organs can be seen. The dorsal blood vessel, the epidermis. the circular muscles, the longitudinal muscles, the nephridia, the abdominal marrow with the subneural blood vessel,
the ventral blood vessel, the mesentery, the coelom, and the yellowish chloracogen tissue. The chloracogen tissue functions in a way analogous to a liver, storing glycogen and lipids, but it also has additional functions, deaminating proteins and releasing ammonia and urea, and synthesizing hemoglobin. This concludes our initial overview of the anatomy of the Annelida, using the example of the common earthworm Lumbricus terrestris.